Welcome to the world headquarters of BKXE, a shed in my backyard we affectionately call the Nuggetorium because I really like chicken nuggets. Over the past five years, I've made some nice little tweaks here and there to the shed, but I have this vision in the back of my mind and I want to bring this vision into reality and make the shed better than it's ever been. Instead of being my dream studio space where I could record a podcast, do a live stream, edit videos, this place has become a total dumping ground over the past year. And anytime I wanna do anything in here, I basically move all the garbage out in front of the shed, record, and then I move it all back in. That is no way to live. Let's see if I can turn these dreams into reality. Thanks to you, my sponsors, who are hitting the like button right now, and FlexiSpot. They're providing a beautiful, amazing standing desk, which you will see here in a few minutes once we get through all these layers. It's hard work, I'm doing it, let's do it, let's go, rock and roll, ah! So the first big change, no more bike storage in the shed. Ah, the hooks hanging from the ceiling, in theory, were really good, but now that my wife has to get in there and try to lift the bikes off the hooks, it's really, really hard. They're always in the way. When I wanna do something, I have to take all the bikes out. We're up to six bikes right now. It's too much. So instead, I've got a really, really good solution in the garage. But getting things going in the garage, much easier said than done. This wall separates my garage from my living room. I've wanted to get in here, put insulation in, air seal any gaps and cracks that are allowing dirty air from the garage to get into the house. Just try to do the right thing. So now that things are open and exposed, you can see 80 plus years of buildup and garbage in here. I kept seeing these and thinking they were wires, but nope, just uh, hardy plants that grew up from underneath the foundation. I'm very curious to see what's on the bottom row here. It was not pretty whatsoever, but by the time I finished, I felt like I left it in a better place than I found it, and I didn't even end up hanging the bikes on this wall. I went with the Steady Rack wall mount bike rack, found these on Amazon, and I am so glad I did it this way. If you follow the instructions and you install this at the right height, you don't ever have to fully lift your bike up to get it mounted. You just pop it up on its back wheel and then roll the bike into the rack. When you get it all together, it's solid as a rock and it pivots left and right so smooth. Things get a little more tricky once you add in more bikes, especially two mountain bikes right next to each other. I tried to stagger the bikes to make mine a little bit higher, and they actually sit together pretty well, but I think I would add in a road bike buffer between two mountain bikes, because that gives you more chance for the handlebars to not be so bad. But overall, this is really, really nice. It is such a relief to finally get to this point and for my vision to actually become a reality and for it to be easy to get these bikes on and off and now I can get working in the shed. So even though the bikes are living in the garage, they will still come here for service. I'm keeping the bike stand. I've got a bunch of my tools all boiled down to one Harbor Freight tool chest. It was 400 bucks. I really like this thing. I've bought three of them now after buying this for Everstoke first and loving it so much. I'm like, oh, I could get all the tools condensed into the shed. Then I bought another one for the garage so I can get all the tools in the garage condensed. It's a really nice piece of kit. The tool chest was a great move, but an even better move to save space in here was moving the giant workbench I had out of here and up to Everstoke. We moved it into the shipping container. It is so much more useful up at the property than in here. And now I've got all this room to work. So now it's time for the difficulty level to go up a couple notches because this floor has run its course. It was nice, it's worked for five years. It is stained and weird. And I would like to do something a little more real, a little more permanent. And I was pulling up one of these tiles recently and uh, I saw that there was ugh, disgusting black mold on the bottom side. This is not good, not healthy. I did not see this coming at all. I figure we live in California, it's dry, it's not that humid. 
but I think moisture gets in and the moisture can't get out and the mold loves that. Yuck. Shout out to the person on the live stream who told me to check for mold underneath these tiles. Apparently it's a very common problem. I had these in my garage as well and now they are in the dumpster. So I've been trying to imagine what I can turn this into because this is where I had my tools in the background before and this is the whole focal point of the studio. So what I think is I will make this whole thing another sticker board, which means this sticker board has to get retired. Maybe I'll send it up to Everstoke to live in the country on a farm with its family. Starting off with a blank slate is a little intimidating, but I have a giant box of doubles from uh, all the past years. So most of those stickers will just go right back up. And then to fill in a little bit of space, I've got some of these custom license plates and I really like these things, all representing some of my favorite trails. <laughs> these are really high quality, just super nice aluminum metal or whatever you call it. I'll screw a few of these in here in random uh, locations and make it look good. So I would like to get the shed back into a kind of sort of blank slate configuration so I can spackle up some of the drywall damage that I've had so I can repaint, I guess. Oh man, there's so many things that turn this from a one week project into a one month project that I don't have time for. <laughs> Gotta figure out the right way to work smart and cut the right corners. And now it begins. Let's do some measurements, pull some trim, get every piece of anything out of the shed and start treading water and try not to drown. So for some reason, I thought I should uh, take the time to restore this piece of plywood instead of just going to Home Depot and buying a new sheet. So I sanded it down, I filled it in with wood putty, and it just, it's okay, but it would have been so much better just to start fresh. But the walls were worth the effort. I spackled them up, I sanded them down, I got them all ready to paint and to kind of hopefully blend in a little bit. Once the paint starts going on, you really start to feel and believe in the transformation. This was a very beautiful moment where my hopes were so high. I found this really amazing peel and stick wallpaper on Amazon, and I totally fell in love with the color, the pattern. But you know what? It's wallpaper, and it's absolutely horrible, and I really really should have never tried to take it on. I got a little too far ahead of myself. I have to focus on the window trim and finish the floor before I can even get to the wallpaper. So trimming out stuff around windows and doors is quite hard. Even though I have a miter saw, I was just completely useless with the measurements and the angles. So I ended up buying these little square things, which you may see in more ornate houses. But for me, it was a perfect cheater where I could just do straight angles for my trim and not have to do 45 degree angles. It saved my butt. Add in a little touch up paint to fill in the gaps and things are looking good. Holy moly, we have hit a fantastic milestone here. I can start pulling everything out of the shed and start the flooring. Yes, this wall is still a mess, but I'm gonna do the wallpaper here very soon. This other stuff is pretty much good to go. I think I'm actually gonna fill up these holes and paint over this, but that's very easy to do as well. <sighs> the time has come for me to start laying the floor inside the shed and I'm gonna do some YouTube research before I actually do that. Today we're covering 10 beginner mistakes to avoid when installing vinyl plank flooring. Okay, I just gotta dive into this and see what happens. I am very lucky that this is just a rectangle. Nothing fancy, there's no ducts that I have to cut out holes, there's no bump outs. So it's pretty much boom, boom, bing, 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 bang, bing. <laughs> I've got my first two rows down now. It's not that hard, but it's not that easy either. You're just constantly fighting it. When you actually get it to flop in perfectly, there's no seams. You know you've done it right, but 
I think we're gonna have some seams. And man, these spacers here, they seem to be the right tool for the job, but when you have to bang something in place, they just get pulled off the wall immediately. They move around way too much, but you need them to move around so you can actually pull them out when you're done. The time has come to get into the deep waters now. When you're talking wood, when you cut, you're going across. When you rip, you're going up and down. So I need to rip some pieces of this flooring. And I've done some measuring with my metric tape measure. I am so much better in my head working with centimeters and millimeters than 5 eighths and 3 sixteenths and all that stuff. So it looks like if I cut or rip down to nine millimeters, I'm gonna have a pretty good line here. My floor is a little wonky. It's a floating floor, so it floated a bit on me, but not too bad. The problem is I got this stuff from Costco and uh, I just went on the website and it said like the trim isn't available right now. So <laughs> I'm gonna rip all this stuff down and then I'm gonna have some weird ugly gap here, which will probably last forever. So I'm gonna try to get this done with my circular saw and a straight edge. Not the right tool for the job. The table saw is the better tool. I don't have one. My dad has one. It's probably packed away in his garage somewhere. But the other thing is I only have like three pieces of flooring left and I need three pieces to finish. So if I mess it up, I have to go back to Costco and buy another box of $40 flooring. Then I'll have a lot of extra left over. I thought I was so smart doing the millimeters, but I gotta switch back to inches because this is exactly one inch less if I wanna use this guide. Oh, the math, it hurts. Well, I definitely ended up doing the math wrong on that. That is not nine centimeters, that is 10 centimeters. Where did the extra centimeter come from? I gave up on the circular saw, forget that. I just went over to my dad's house used his table saw, the most dangerous tool in the world. There will be no video of us using the table saw. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go, victory lap, right here. Come on. Hallelujah, I got it done. I cannot believe it. I'll take the spacers out and uh, I don't even know what to do with myself next. The subfloor was not perfect, so this floor will not be perfect, but it's pretty good. I can feel like a big hole over here that hopefully won't crack the pieces, especially when I put a 300 pound tool chest on it. And now it's on to the baseboards, and instead of suffering through a thousand paintbrush strokes, I bought a paint sprayer, and the first <laughs> couple times I used it, I didn't know what I was doing. I would drag the hose over the paint, I would step in the paint, I got the paint everywhere, but finally, a few days later, after using, you know, how many gallons of paint, I started to get pretty good at it. And now it's time to start the wallpaper. Well, the good news is we got the first piece installed. The bad news is Sarah and I are getting divorced. That was so brutal, so tough, so agitating. Oh, just awful, but I hope it's gonna be worth it. We've got many, many more pieces to go, but the hardest piece was kind of the full length, I think. These other pieces are gonna be a lot smaller, hopefully easier to deal with. One of the good tips I got from watching YouTube was to use a dry eraser, dry erase marker eraser, to go on. If you use one of these things, it'll actually kind of damage and mar up. The video I watched had the guy using this in the corner to kind of push in the corners and set it in, but not to drag over the face. If you start looking too closely, you see all the imperfections, but I'm hoping this will look really good on camera because it's razzle dazzle, you know, oh, even looking at the screen right now, it just looks so beautiful. I, oh, if I can actually get the whole thing going, will it be worth it? Well, as much as I like this, it's time to go. That was a whole wasted day. I can't do it. It's too hard. I'm giving up. I've got to pivot to something else. DIY wallpaper is DIY torture. So here is the new plan of attack. MDF, shiplap, 
12 foot pieces, lots of paint. I think I sprayed it on pretty good. It's tedious, it's tough, but I think it's actually pretty good. So now I just gotta cut these pieces down, get them in there. I am so glad I took this route. It looks great. It's not as ridiculous with the details. Only gonna have to make a few tricky cuts like this one right here. Did it with the jigsaw and hopefully if all my measurements are right, it'll fall in place. Oh yes, and you can't even tell that it's cut. Maybe a little bit back here. Eh, if you're standing up, you don't see it. Oh, I'm so happy with this. Definitely gonna have a couple little paint touch-ups here when I'm done. And these lights right now are just so ugly and just bad, like showing off all the bad parts. Hopefully the final lighting in here will show off all the good parts. There has been a lot of progress and now I have come to a critical juncture. Do you ever hear the word juncture used without the saying critical juncture? Now I'm going to see if my cut piece looks like I cut it right. It does look like this is golden now. I had to kind of trim this. It's not perfect. A lot of cutting with the circular saw, but with a piece of trim on top here, it will hide the cut. And I think we are golden. This is my final piece of trim. Hopefully it's going to fit. Man, mitering the angles and doing all these cuts is just brutal for a first timer. But I, I made my way through it. It's not great, but it's not terrible. Ooh, that looks pretty good. I like it, I like it. Let's finish this thing off. Okay, just three weeks later and we're at this point. I am not really happy yet, but I am relieved. Hopefully happiness will come later. Okay, I will now allow myself to be happy because my FlexiSpot Pro Plus standing desk is in place. This thing is a beast from top to bottom. You can feel that the Pro Plus desk, also called the E7, is built incredibly well and durable. It has a high temperature resistant and anti-wear coating and it is stable, even on the really uneven floor here in the shed. The E7 has two big ol' motors in the legs that can easily move up to 355 pounds, which of course meant I had to take a joyride once I got it assembled. The up and down range on this thing is incredible. It goes so low you could basically sit on a bean bag and work at your desk, and it goes so high that you're still good if you're six foot three inches tall. The E7 is also expandable in width. I had to actually move this out a little bit to fit the desktop that I got. It can go anywhere from 44 inches to 74 inches wide. I highly suggest the premium keypad. You can watch the numbers tick up and tick down in the exact position. When you find your perfect spot, you just save it into memory, and then boom, you hit the button to stand, you hit the button to sit, and the desk does the rest. I can't tell you how excited I am to actually have a real desk. I have pretty much spent the past six years editing my videos at my kitchen counter. I'm not quite ready to spend hours and hours standing at my desk, so I still need a chair. This is the FlexiSpot Ergonomic Chair Pro, the nicest chair I have ever owned, bar none. It's probably time you got a real desk too. Check out the link in the description. The FlexiSpot E7 is a beast. Thank you to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. Yes, I know you're looking at these cables and it's such a mess, but worry not. It is time for a little cable management. The FlexiSpot desk actually comes with a nice little cable tray, but I also needed to use some double-sided tape, some zip ties, some of this uh, hose stuff. What would you call this? A sleeve for cables. And man, it came out so good. I was able to kind of get everything tucked up underneath the desk. And I have to account for the desk being 50 inches in the air and 24 inches on the ground. So nothing can really snag or hit anything else. It's kind of a different calculation when you're working with the standing desk. 
So I've got the desk set up. Things are looking quite amazing right now. But the thing I don't have time to spend another week on is my live stream setup. Kind of the whole point of the shed to make it look good and sound good and have a studio feel, that's gonna have to wait. I'm gonna have to bare bones this. I already have a pretty good setup and I think I'm gonna be able to make it look good and sound good, but I really have to get moving on this stuff or else it's gonna take another month. There's my live stream setup right there. Nice and easy to pull apart and get back going. And here's my new live stream command center, flimsy table. That was about the quickest project so far. Got things untangled, got them on there, got this going. Hello. Got my dongle charging up there. And then I got me on the screen here, there, everywhere. Ready to stream. And now I can finally get to spicing up the accent wall hanging some stuff up on that wall, maybe over there too. Who knows, let's do it. My awesome novelty license plates are going to do a lot to cover up all the imperfections and uh, goofiness on the back wall here. I like the way this is starting out. Obviously this is just a start. With a sticker board, you need a ton of stickers, you need chaos, you need contrast. With my other sticker board, it took me six years to make it look good, so. This is a start. I think I would have crowded things around a little bit more if I planned this out at all, but it's fine. I'm gonna get more stickers. I love the license plates. I just think they look so cool. Just add some chaos and some color and some interestingness to the shed. Filled in the gaps with a couple more things and just ordered a boatload of new stickers. So I'm gonna fill that in. And then I put up some of my favorite things up on the wall. This is my awesome 50 state shred map that Sarah got me for Christmas. So cool, documenting all the different places that I went. And one uh, place I didn't get to go, but we had plans to go there and she got this before we actually did it. <laughs> is this video done? I think I've accomplished 95% of what I set out to do and I'm gonna need a little more time to get to 100%. Who am I kidding? It's never gonna get to 100%, but I am so, so happy and glad that I actually did this and got the Nuggetorium overhauled and the backyard is still an ungodly mess. <laughs> the lighting's still a little bit harsh. I want to do some sound deadening and stuff, but man, if you made it this far, please hit the like button. Thank you to my sponsor, FlexiSpot. It's so cool, it's so great. If you have a sticker you wanna send me, just Google contact BKXC. Maybe I'll put it up on the board, no promises. But until then, do me a favor, go write something new. and Maybe I'll see you on the trail.